hello everyone and welcome to 1623 Studios, Cape Ann Art Waves Programming. I'm Jacqueline Ganim DeFalco. My guest today is Pamela Stratton, mosaic artist. Uh, so just a little background, our show Art Waves is a fantastic opportunity to get up close and personal with artists, in many cases right in their studios. Uh, I am, I'm here one week and the next week will be Christine Fisher. We alternate weeks. And when we're uh, finished with this, within the next couple of weeks, you can see this episode on Studio 1623 channels. And uh, we want to spend as much time as we, we can here with Pam to learn about her work, do a deep dive, uh, her inspiration, and also how she's been managing through the last couple of months. So welcome, Pam. Hey, thank you. It's great to do this with you. Great. Well, of course, we're also fellow Cape Ann artisans, which makes it particularly special. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I was trying to remember when I started, and I, I'm terrible with dates that way. I guess it must be six years. How long for you? The artisan uh, tour, but you've yeah. been making mosaics for quite a long time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, in fact, when I met you, you it was a we were doing two things, but let's let's get back to the beginning. So uh, many people know about your fabulous work, but not everyone. So just as an introduction, I'd love for you to describe your work and a little bit about your inspiration. Okay. Well, I'm a mosaic artist, and lately I've been calling myself a mixed media mosaic artist because mm -hmm. I've started to integrate other things into the, the work that I do, either cold wax and oil paint or encaustic. But traditionally, it's uh, working with small pieces of glass that are imported. My favorite uh, medium is uh, Italian smalty. It's called smalty, um, mm. but it's glass. And it comes in many different forms. But I like to, uh, I, like, I think about myself as a maker, and I always have. Mm. Since I was a kid, I like to make things. I tried, I taught myself jewelry making and silversmithing. I'd take a class, get books, and just do it. And um, over the years, I just developed an interest in beautifying my home. I think that's what my inspiration is, making my surroundings nice. And that started the patio. Ah, excellent. You know, excellent. and I had to make a little mosaic for the center. And I thought, oh, that was, that was really, it suited me because I like tools. I like to make things and I liked the art component. I think I took a, uh, a class on my own when I was 17 or something you kind of like you would do it online now but I sent away by mail to learn mm. to draw but then I let it go and I taught myself the silversmithing and I was good enough that somebody wanted me to apprentice and go up to New Hampshire and really learn but I you know I was in my early 20s and it just felt too weird to do that so I just went in a different direction then I came you know I just didn't do the art so I just put it on the side but for myself personally I was always like looking to beautify my, my area, my home. So I made this patio after a trip from Italy where everybody has a piazza. Yeah. <laughs> and I had old concrete and grass that didn't grow. So I had to, uh, I redid the whole thing with brick intersecting circles, just like Italy. Isn't that and, great? Yeah, so it was, fantastic. and I loved every minute of it. It was, I'm an acupuncturist by trade. That's mm -hmm. my profession. And all the contractors I worked with let me build this patio using a seven inch tile saw. <laughs> they must have had a great time, but it came out beautiful. And they said, if I had somebody make that, it would cost $20,000 or something. So that's how it started in mosaics, really. And then I made, I took a class, one class down the Cape, because I, I, or sorry, at Mass Art. And uh, I learned to the process. And then I got books. Mm. And then I had to make myself sunflowers. Because mm. in Italy, where I stayed, we looked at a beautiful field of sunflowers. And I had this great pot of sunflowers on my nice new patio, mm -hmm. and I could never replace them. So I said, I'm going to make myself some sunflowers out of glass. And that's what started it all. Isn't, isn't Italy an inspiration for so many of us? Yeah. Really yeah. and truly. That's so great. Yeah. So you mentioned your other profession, which is actually how I first met you as an acupuncturist. Yeah, right. That was long Helped ago. me when I was dealing with uh, Lyme disease, which yeah. was, it was quite a while ago, thank goodness. Yeah. Um, and so, but it's very recent that you, I think you've kind of gone over to the other side here, right? So talk well, about pretty much, yeah. I've, uh, 
I'm only seeing very few people now, so I'm kind of semi-retired, and I'm, I'm not accepting any new clients, so mm -hmm. it'll just kind of gently transition into uh, just doing artwork. Well, the combination of your thinking about that anyway, and then everything we've just the pandemic. gone through, yeah, so did this sort of give you even a bigger, um, opportunity in terms of delving into your art? How would well, you describe it, it this did. period? It did in some ways because it pushed everything up. I thought I might transition in June, but mm -hmm. when this happened in March, it was like, boom, all of a sudden, well, that's mm -hmm. it. So I actually, you know, I took my office apart and I had to deal with all of that. So that took a lot of time. 27 years in one place is a long time and lots of piles and Mm -hmm. things you have to do so mm -hmm. i didn't get as much quiet time because i i'm also considered um i could keep treating people and i had to take care of some people with considered pain. essential essential yeah it was essential you know i could work um they didn't recommend that you do it very much the society but only in cases where you needed to and that's what i kept it at but sometimes i'd have elderly people call me in pain and i'd have to go see them in their home so right. i never really was really off altogether except for maybe one week yeah. you know i was having to do something okay so yeah. let's move on because the process of mosaic art to me yeah. is what it's so interesting and i had the opportunity to take one of your classes naively thinking that i could actually finish what i wanted to start in in a, in a day and yeah. of course um i learned that that was going to be nearly impossible and you were very generous with me but truly the step by step of of you know from beginning to end is is so interesting and i'm sure that you know there's there's a lot you could share so just sort of give us the highlights of your process well it usually starts with a you know an idea of something that i want to accomplish like the sunflowers for instance mm -hmm. and then you'd make what the italians call a cartoon or an image mm. of the piece you'd try to figure out the things uh, that are important of where it's going to live Mm. So I wanted to make something for outside, so I had to use materials and adhesives and substrates that were all appropriate for that. Same with your sign. It had to tolerate New England winter, which not much does. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you have to build it in the right way if you want it to last. And mosaics take so long, it's important to pay attention to those things. Mm -hmm. So in my class, I always hand people a packet with all that kind of information, and we go over all the basics mm -hmm. of... Uh, glues and how you apply things and why you choose one material over another mm -hmm. we do all that kind of thing so that's the first step and then you want to draw a simple outline mm -hmm. if you're a skilled person or an artist and you already have the ability to make a lovely drawing or and color it in you could do that and lay your something over the top and follow that. There are different techniques. That's what's interesting about mosaic. I think people see it and they go, oh, because you can mosaic anything. I've seen people do their cars, mm. you know, buildings, signs, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, fine art. And for me, my interest was outside art. That's mm -hmm. what got me started. And that's really what I'm coming back to is beautifying the yard and the garden. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy mm -hmm. that. Yes, so in class, people, um, I do a one day workshop, which is a little unusual yeah. because it's intense focus, as you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I work with people all day to try to realize their image all the while when they come in, I tell them they have to keep it very simple because I let people come at all levels too. Mm -hmm. So I might have a very beginner and I might have someone who's been many times or has done a lot of different things and they want to focus on one particular aspect of mosaic. Right. It's really quite involved. Right. It's it, no, it's it's a beautiful thing. And I think it's for me, it's very close to the sea glass work, you know, in terms of the kind of a little bit of a puzzle, right? You know, there's yeah. a certain puzzle aspect to that, making all the pieces work together. Um, so given the range of the work that you do, and you've done some really big pieces, and you've yeah. also done these incredible nature projects, I'll call them, which yeah. I I hope you'll talk about what is the biggest problem and you don't have to isolate it to one, but the one that would come top of mind or a roadblock that you hit in recent years. Well, I think what I'm working on now really, because 
I want to put mosaic into the tree that got hit by lightning that I had carved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've never seen, that's what I do. I see, I get an idea and then I like to figure out how to do it. it may mm -hmm. not have been done before, or I have to find right. the resources or the people who could help me to know, but nobody has done this. So, and I know I'm doing something that won't last forever because the tree won't last forever, but mm -hmm. neither will I. So <laughs> right. I want to do this. So that's, uh, so I had to learn quite a few different techniques. I, um, one of the images I gave you is some of the tree rings itself. I burned with a torch and it's a, Japanese technique called huh. so, sujiban. Wow. That preserves the wood. And then I routed it with a router and I put glass circles in it. And that leads from my front door to the tree. Oh, man. And then the other, so the first part of the tree, I did um, like a channel. Mm. So to do that, it was fairly straightforward, but I had to create a substrate myself because mm. the tree is not flat or straight. So I put plastic and then I took fiberglass mesh in thin set mm. and I made a substrate that fit exactly the form of the tree and you'll see that in the image and then I removed it from the tree after it dried and mosaiced it and put it back into the tree so That's clever yeah wow. yeah so the next the challenge that I'm facing now is I have a bigger section that I've made the form for that fits the shape of the tree but it's not contained within a channel mm -hmm. it's smaller than the space right. so I thought wow what am I going to do about that you know so I'm going to I decided I'm going to use some epoxy sculpt and after it's mosaic I'm going to create my own border using that material and then I'll grout it and then I'll insert wow. it into the tree so that's quite a project it sounds like the tree you know the destruction of that tree from that big storm um, really has been uh, the focal point of a yeah. lot of a lot of creativity and and yeah. nation, really. Yeah, it really broke my heart, and I love that tree so much. You know, mm -hmm. I just had to do something to honor it and to preserve it and to just make it special. I just couldn't cut it down. Just couldn't. That's one lucky tree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have to say. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so you, let's, I want to move on because uh, we only have about two, two minutes or so left. And I know oh, it goes, oh it goes so fast. I know, I know it goes so fast. Well, we'll, we'll go a little longer, but you know, just yeah. the nature of this, we have to keep moving along. So yeah. as we've been talking a lot about teaching, um, you are also, pre you know, you're very involved in the community, really. When I think about your role as an acupuncturist, as a teacher, also president of the Cape Ann Artisans for a number of years, which was, you know, really a, a huge contribution to the community. Um, you're also active in national and international mosaic groups. So just talk to us about your roles and what you've learned from, from all your different experiences, which go, excuse me for that's our little, uh, reminder stay on on schedule oh, okay. um, anyway just talk about your roles and and what you've gotten out of those experiences well uh the certainly the cape Ann artisans you know for me i always I, I never started out with the intention of being an artist it was really a maker and beautifying my own property and things just happened from that and mm -hmm. as i was saying the teaching started from that sunflower mosaic it was chosen to be this poster child ah. for the Somerville Museum, ah. really, you know, exhibition. So here, this is my first piece and like, ah. boom, I was there. And then the people who ran it asked me to teach and then that happened. It was just kind of amazing how it just went boom, you know, yeah. but uh, <laughs> I got myself off track. <laughs> no, that's good. I think that's going to be very, to hear that for yeah. people who, who have a little fear of, you know, maybe I don't have the formal training or, you know, maybe oh. this isn't what I thought my path was going to be. That's incredibly inspiring. Yeah. Well, I live on Cape Ann. I'm surrounded by art. My partner is an artist. I always loved art and I love beauty and I like trying to recreate and make my space nice. So, mm -hmm. you know, I keep evolving. Now I'm wanting to do more three-dimensional things in the yard. Mm -hmm. I just, for mm -hmm. the first time, carved into granite, local Cape Ann oh. granite, which I've wanted to do for years. And I finally just took out the angle grinder and <laughs> I had a commission somebody wanted and I did it and it wasn't so bad. So yeah. I'm really um, pretty pleased with that. Well, I think that, the, that what I wanted to get back to though is your different roles and also just your outreach 
overseas to bring people here. I mean, I think some of those. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. The question was being because the president and special. yeah, of taking a class. I wanted to learn a technique of how to create mime plasters because I like quiet space and active space in my mosaic in my art. Mm -hmm. And this Italian teacher in Spilimbergo, which if anybody gets a chance to go to this spectacular school in Italy, mm -hmm. I met Dagmar Friedrich, who. Mm -hmm. uh, taught me this technique and she had never been to America. So myself and my friend who's a mosaic artist invited her to the United States to teach. So now she comes every two years uh, to America, to the DC area and to my studio to teach a different mosaic tra traditional technique. Um, unfortunately, she was supposed to be here uh, this May and we had to cancel it, but hopefully she'll be able to come back in October. Mm -hmm. But yeah, being involved in different organizations, I helped found the uh, New England Mosaic Society, which is a little offshoot from the, the SAMA, it's called, it's the Society of American Mosaic Artists. Mm -hmm. They have big international shows. And mm -hmm. I was honored to be in that show, which was held at the Parthenon Museum last year in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. It's not easy to get into that exhibition. So I was really pleased with that. And that led me to talking to a teacher, Sherry Warner Hunter, who does enormous mosaics mm. um, outside for big, you know, for libraries and big places yeah. for kids mostly. And she's developed a technique where she carves polystyrene and then covers it in cement and then mosaics it. So they're really large, but fairly lightweight. So I learned that technique and I've started making small things. I, I don't know if you can see the koi fish, I oh, just made okay. that for my pond. It's a three-dimensional piece, yeah. And I'm doing some <laughs> abstract work. So I am moving towards more outdoor work again. So all of these things have led to that. But I enjoyed participating in groups, but I think in my heart, I'm really a worker bee. Mm -hmm. I'm more of a background person rather than somebody in the forefront. So just, um, we have to close shortly, okay. but I always like to leave on a note of what's, what's next. I mean, I think some of that you've alluded to, but what is actually literally next for you that you're looking forward to? Well, next for me is doing this pretty good, decent sized panel on my tree and carving more granite. And I ha I'm, I've been invited to teach, strangely enough, okay. in Bar Harbor, Maine, at a place called Art Waves. <laughs> How funny is that? Don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> so well, we'll see, if that's supposed to be in August, then we'll see. And I'm looking forward to some quiet time because even though the pandemic happened, it's not been slow for me because I've had to keep working and changing an office and helping a friend integrate all kinds of materials. So I've been very busy. Yes. And yes. I look forward to continuing with it. I, I had actually taken a little piece of smoky, but I think this is too small to see yeah. oh, the glass. Yeah. yeah, how it gets yeah. shaped and my favorite tools and, you know, all of that. Pam, we're getting close to uh, wrapping up here. So I wanted to, uh, first of all, thank you for sharing all, all of the work you've been doing. But now's the big question, which is what's next? Uh, we want to have things to look forward to uh, as we emerge uh, from uh, these early stages of the pandemic. Uh, so I'd like to know what's on your mind, both artistically and commercially. Uh, what's coming up for you? Well, I guess I'd like to resume classes, but I have yet to figure out what's the safest way to do that. Mm -hmm. I've been invited to do some teaching up in Bar Harbor, Maine, the end of the month. So I have to make a decision there. And I really am looking forward to playing around with uh, that granite a little bit more in my angle grinder. So that surprises me. So I'm looking forward to that. Plus we have the mini tours coming up, which is something very new for the artisans. We weren't able to do our traditional beginning of June tour. So we've broken it up into two mini tours, um, July 18th and August 15th on a Saturday. And all the artisans have figured out how to make that safe for mm -hmm. guests. We're encouraging people to call us and to book a time slot so that we can control the flow. Mm. Um, it's easier for me, I think, because I have a nice big yard and some of the artwork is outside. So it, I could have people touring around the yard as well as one or two at a time coming into the studio. Everyone's encouraged to follow the proper protocol for COVID, you know, with wearing masks and mm. sanitizer will be available and all of that. But I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing some folks. 
Yes, and so am I. And it's just seven of us that'll be doing that, not all the artisans. I think That's the right, yeah. yeah, the um the key there is our experience will probably inform uh the fall tour and we'll decide then whether that will go forward. So right. yeah. um, so we'll both be looking forward to to seeing everyone out there on July eighteenth and August eighteenth. Right. There's a little mini Gloucester component in Rockport. So the three of the Rockport uh, studios are really pretty close together. And mm -hmm. uh, hopefully we'll yeah. have good weather. <laughs> yes, exactly. We'll bring yeah. it outside. So thank yeah. you so much, Pam. Thanks for all the beautiful work you've done um, for the artisans, um, for the mosaic world, uh, everything else, and uh, for the viewers. Please watch for us on Channel 12, on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram and on Twitter and anywhere else on the internet. Uh, and until the next episode of Cape Ann Artways, stay safe.